playing opposite side of uh, uh, Cooper Cup. I mean, how? I mean, just talk about that dynamic duo over the past three, four years. Um, been a good dynamic duo, man. Uh, even Shaq Hill, man. We had another guy too. Uh, he's a big part of our team, but. Uh, Playing next to a guy like Coop, man, just taught me how to, you know what I'm saying, almost humble myself in a way, just uh, being a second guy, um, taught me how to be a, really be a team player. I mean, I've always been a team player, but really made me, like, buckle down and be like, okay, this is a team game, and, you know what I'm saying, you're not going to get every pass all the time. And that's how I just try to compare it to being in the league. I know I won't probably even be a starter when I first came in. I'll probably be a role guy. So I just try to use it to my advantage and just, you know what I'm saying, humble myself in a way that I understand that, you know what I'm saying, I don't always get past it, so when it does come, take advantage of it. Yeah. Well, and I definitely learned a lot from it. I'm sorry. Uh, and just talk about the chemistry you have with quarterbacks. I mean, you, you've played with quite a few with Vernon Adams, Jordan Glass, and then to this past season, uh, Gage really. Uh, yeah, I just uh, try to get extra time in with him uh, after practice, throwing with him. But um, definitely just having a relationship with him off the field, man. I think that's the best way, honestly. Just knowing him personally, you know what I'm saying? Having a mental relationship with him. Uh, it's, it's quite easy when you know what I'm saying if, you have, if you're a good receiver you, you're solid at you know what I'm saying running routes and stuff like that it'd be it makes it easier then for, to pick up what you're doing so I think that was the best way running good routes running hard for them and just getting it, making them get a feel for what how you run and how you, you know what I'm saying, catch the ball is that disappointing at all like you, you feel you might have a, a rapport with one quarterback and then next thing you know there's somebody else on your center yeah it is kind of funny sometimes definitely in 2015 we we was rotating three quarterbacks it was definitely weird. Um, I mean, one year too. I think it was in 2014. We had a left-handed quarterback, and that was just super weird. Never, never experienced nothing like that. But, but when we was just rotating three Before people, it was just press, tough, and press, you really had to lock in and focus on what, how the ball was coming in, and just really kind of hand-eye coordination when the ball was in your hands and squeezing it. Uh, obviously, a lot of attention is uh, given to Cooper Cup, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. uh, but how would you sell yourself to a team? What What are some of the things that you would offer a team uh, there to bring? You I would in? say my uh, my energy, man. I'm a high energized guy. I come to practice and prepared every day, uh, going hard, man. Every every single play, no matter what it is. Like I said, in practice, I know I'm gonna be a kind of you know what I'm saying a practice guy, doing stuff in practice to be able to make my name. So I think just man, bringing energy to the field every single play. Just going hard, man. Being physical, but um, I, you know, I'm saying I got natural ability, man. I, I work as hard as him, so people don't think I do, but I'm you know, second to none working hard, man. I do everything. You know, what I'm saying that guy does film, weights, you know saying running. I can just, I can do it all. So this day ain't been nothing. Not you, know what I'm saying I haven't been through. So, but being with him, man, I've learned a lot from him. Like, he's taught me how to get a governor off my body. You know, what I'm saying pushing my body to another level. You know what I'm saying not getting tired, telling myself I'm not tired. That's what I've definitely learned a lot from Cooper. Because that's what you see in his game. Playing in the FCS, playing in one of the tougher conferences in the Big Sky. I mean, what was that uh, like going up against some pretty nice competition from the FCS? No, yeah, level? we definitely had a solid competition, man. I, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's slept on, definitely. And I just think, you know what I'm saying, a team's kind of just, it's just a lot of politics in it, you know what I'm saying? A lot, of, a lot of guys at our level don't get a lot of respect, but it's just where we ended up. It's probably most guys just did it to themselves, you know what I'm saying, not taking high school serious and able to get better scholarships. That's how it was for me. But um, I just think, you know what I'm saying, the league need to respect it. just a little bit more. I'm not not on the league, but um, the competition is high, man. You see a lot of great players, a lot of good DBs, definitely a lot of receivers, man. Eastern's breeded a lot of receivers, and the success has been good. So it, it's definitely should earn a little bit more respect. And when, when did it hit you that this could be a possibility to play pro ball? Um, probably about my sophomore year. Uh, my freshman year, I was a true freshman, and I didn't, uh, didn't play a lot, but my sophomore year, one of the uh, one of the vets went down and uh, just kind of stepped up, man. And I just realized, man, this can be something I could do, man. And, and out of high school, um, I got into some situations, man, and I transferred to high schools and kind of realized then I need to wake up, man. Something got to change, or I'm gonna be at Portland, Oregon, walking around the streets, and that's not the life I wanted to live. So I definitely woke up around my sophomore year when I when I really had an impact you know, on the team, helping the team. Uh, just just went a little bit and I just felt like my skills was up to par with some of the best of them. So. How did you end up going to Eastern? Um, my like my junior year, uh, transferred out of high schools and um, took school serious, got uh, and just lucked up with some FCS scholarships, man. And I had most big sky, but it was an easy choice, man. Passed the ball a lot, knew I could, you know, say catch the ball, make people miss, stuff like that. And it was quite a very easy choice. I, I was watching them in the playoffs. I knew they was, you know, saying winning a lot, so. 
definitely a part of a, a kind of team I wanted to be a part of. Do you think you could have played at you know Pac-12 level? I mean, did you would have had those kind of offers if high school had done differently for you? Or? Yes, yeah. definitely would have. Yeah. yeah, if I would have took serious high school serious, man, my dad was kind of got disciplined me hard. And, I didn't like what he was trying to do for me, but I didn't understand what he was trying to do for me, and I just definitely regret it, man. One of the things I regret most of my life is not listening to my dad, what he was trying to, you know what I'm saying, discipline me, just make me take school serious. But once I, yeah, like you said, I, I transferred schools and I, and I got lucked up, but I definitely believe I can play in the Pac-12. I, I know. And so it could have, I could have been a, a bigger stock. I, my stock could have been higher if I would have got a Pac-12, but it is what it is, man. I'm blessed and I'm enjoying it, man. So, there's, there seems to be this perception that Cooper stock has sort of risen as people got to see him through some of the process and things yeah. like that. I imagine you guys sort of just probably almost laugh at that, right? Yeah. I mean, no, like, yeah. like, why were people not even questioning him in the first place? That's, That's what I'm saying, saying, man. And what he's done on the field, man, it's, it's like, it's amazing, man. And he can do it in Pac-12, too. Even Shaq here, we all can do it in the Pac-12. It's just that. That's where we ended up, man. But uh, we definitely proved, you know what I'm saying, to the world that we're capable, man. I, I actually heard somebody say, man, these, these three guys are, like, capable of playing in the Pac-12. So a commentator said it, but just something little like that, man, you know what I'm saying, kind of warmed my heart, man. Like, okay, man. But I just got to work harder for what it is. I got to stand out. But I, I accept challenges, man. I, I, I take them head on and just got to keep going. Is there a speed? Do you think you have to run here in the 40 to make people? Yeah, I think I need to run like a 4 5 5, 4 yeah. 5 4. Yeah, I need, to, I need to be in there, man. I can't even run no 4 6. It's going to be ugly. They're going to question me. <laughs> have you been uh, I've been working out somewhere? Oh, yeah, I've been up in Bellevue, Washington. Okay. Uh, a guy called Tracy Ford. He's yeah. here today, actually. Okay. Yeah. It's been good, man. He works on speed. Definitely got me stronger, man. So I, didn't, I wasn't in like my bench today. I, I got two taken from me. I was pretty sad about that, but it's all right. Daryl Daniels, I know, is working out there, too, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's my guy. Uh, just my guy, Shaq Hill. Okay. Uh, my buddy, Samson, from my school. Ever come to the DN. But uh, that, just me and Darrell. Darrell's probably the biggest, biggest school guy. Two Hawaii guys. Um, there's some D lineman and an O lineman. They're pretty solid there. We got a nice group, good group of guys. You talk about Pac-12, right? You guys had success. I mean, you beat Washington State mm -hmm. last year. I mean, so do, do you feel like that at least shows that and you can visit limited time no, or yeah. two here or there? Yeah, definitely feel like that. You know, so put us on the map. Um, we beat Oregon State in 2014. Yeah. Um, Ran, ran UW, gave UW a run for their money, man, in, yeah. in what, 15. Yeah. I, I had a good game that game. That was definitely a game I felt like uh, I could really, you know what I'm saying, get a shot at the league. Uh, I was playing against some top guys. And, uh, well, we played Oregon and, well, we played, we played Washington in 15. I mean, 14, we played Oregon in 15. And, you know what I'm saying? We, we lost Vernon Adams at Oregon. That was a tough one, man. I feel like we would have had him. We would have definitely had a shot, but we put up some points, man. We we competed. We always compete, though, man. That's the thing about Eastern. We're, you know we just, we go hard every single game. We don't, we don't take anybody, you know what I'm saying? We don't, we're not scared of anybody. That's the thing. You know, our, our competitiveness is, is second to none. But, um, and like you said, Washington State was the last one, man. It was a close game, very tough one, but I think just, man, we came prepared. We were mentally prepared, physically prepared, and it worked out for the best. Who did you, who did you go up against a lot in Washington game? Uh, I went up against uh, Marcus Peters in the first first quarter a lot, but um, he's definitely a great player, man. I, I learned a lot going against guys like that. He's a talker, but that stuff, you know what I'm saying, it helps me, man. It kind of, you know what I'm saying, make me get on my horse. But And I went for 114 with a touchdown and seven catches. It was, he had me, you know what I'm saying, he had me on one. He helped me out doing what he was doing. But um, I forgot who else I put. Uh, I scored on somebody else. I don't know his name, though. But um, it was definitely a DB that came in. Guy had dreads, but he was he was better than the starter. But I give him his respect because he was good. But I don't remember who else. Because they got a couple guys here now, Sidney Jones. No, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they got some ballers. Yeah, yeah, we, we, me and Darrell, we all, yeah, we all be talking about if we would have played him this year. He said he would have blew us out, but I told him, man, we had three receivers, man. That was, whew, we had some skills on us. I don't think you can do. It. You gotta watch Cooper. You gotta watch Coop. You gotta watch me. And you gotta watch Shaq. So. If they was gonna play man to man, somebody was gonna get beat. I, I, I honestly believe it in my whole heart. He don't believe it, but you still talk to uh, you still talk to Vernon Adams much? And yeah, I talked to Vernon. Yeah, he's doing good in the CFL, man. He told me just keep my hand up. Definitely congratulating me about being in this combine. Like I'm saying, I never thought I would be here, man. So you know what I'm saying? Whatever I do here, I'm just blessed to be in it, man. Because coming from FCS, like you said, we don't get a lot of respect. So uh, they obviously want something from me. They obviously see something in me. So I'm definitely just happy to be here, man. Like. 
Like even when I was a kid, I thought I never thought I would be in it. Even when I when I first went to Eastern, I said, man, I'll never be in the combine. Watching it every year, but now that it's here, man, I'm just like, man, I'm just gonna take full advantage, man. It's, the sky's the limit for me. Were, were players mad at Vernon at all? The O line was pretty mad. Yeah. O line was pretty mad, but uh, most of the skills kind of understood, man. It was Oregon, like if it was me, like I would. Come on, now it's just hard. That's, you saying you taking yourself to you saying higher standards. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're politic, they'll look at you better. I mean, the competition, and it's just a better opportunity for you to get to get your shot in the league. It's just how it is. So, man, it's probably the easy choice for them. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. Obviously, you have confidence. Three of the top five prospects in this draft are one power five. Antonio Brown came from a solid, smaller school. There, there are good players at every position from smaller schools throughout the NFL, but it seems like it's sticking out more than ever. Yeah. At receiver position, what do you think that might be? Um, I just think, man, people, they're working harder than the ones that are already privileged to be in the first round and getting paid that kind of money. They, they don't really try hard. I don't, they probably feel like they don't have to. But, I mean, they kind of don't. I mean, that's just how it is. But it's just that guys like us have chips on our shoulders and we just want it so bad because where we're at and how we've been, not not that we're treated bad, but how we've been treated and how we're looked at just because, like, the competition, they'll, they'll put that in our in our weakness profile. Like, that's just, that's kind of like, all right, like, well, how can we control that? It's something we can't control. But it's definitely about standing out. I think guys like us stand out and you look apart. Definitely like my guy Cooper Cup, man. The, the records he's broken is it's, it's, it's amazing. And I just feel like, man, he's helped me, you know what I'm saying, get my name out there. And I just, you know what I'm saying, keep playing every game, going hard, and just trying to prove myself just as he did. But he's definitely putting Eastern on the map. And it's helped all of us, me and my guy Shaq. Sure. Do you feel that? Do you feel that coming out of high school is very similar to kind of you're right now in terms of, uh, you know, obviously you're going to Yeah, I didn't go to yeah. Alabama or whatever. Yeah, and coming out of Portland, yeah, the, you know what I'm saying, we don't get a lot of respect out of Portland, definitely not, you know what I'm saying. I, um, I had some situations in high school. My, my, my recruitment could have been better, but still, like you said, I wasn't getting the love I could have had. If I was a three-star, I probably still would have got looks than, than, I, than I was, but I was, I was a no-star, I was a nobody, so. When I once I went to Eastern, I knew it was going to be the same. Like you said, it wasn't nothing was really going to change. So I just work hard, man, and just you know what I'm saying, take my opponent serious, man. Respect every opponent, and just prepare like I've never prepared, even if they're a D2 school, D1 school, NAIA. Just respect everybody, and things will go well. Good luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Nice to meet you too. Did you accomplish everything you wanted during your time at Eastern Washington? How would you describe your overall experience now looking back at what you were able to do? Um, I think my, my freshman year, my true freshman year, I could have took advantage more, man. Could have gotten a playbook. Because, man, uh, first game, Oregon State, Coop went down with some cramps, man. And, you know what I'm saying, that was my opportunity to do, you know what I'm saying, showcase my talent. But just wasn't prepared, man. Just wasn't, didn't know the, know the plays like that. Coach couldn't trust me. So one of the things I really regret, probably one of the only things I regret, during my, my years, but um, was definitely uh, proud of myself for taking advantage of, a, you know what I'm saying, stepping up when one of my teammates got injured, man. That was a big thing for me. Improving myself, man, just going against some of the top competition and just making plays, man, scoring touchdowns. In my sophomore year, I scored the most touchdowns I've scored, so I don't know if that came with me being watched more or whatever, but definitely happy with definitely how I ended. Junior, I, you know what I'm saying, I just improved every year, so it was like, you know what I'm saying, my scale was just always going up. It was never going down. So definitely happy with how it went. It's cool.